everybody and thank you for joining me here at the Art Life YouTube channel once again. Now today is a collage task which means that we're pretty much cutting and pasting paper but if you don't have much paper at home it doesn't matter. This is all about using what is around you and being creative with the materials you have at hand. So I encourage you to raid your recycle bin and use whatever type of packaging you can find in there. I even use some baking paper as some of the wings for my artwork. Now today I show you how to create one, two, three types of bugs using some cutting and pasting skills and using some simple shapes put together to create little buggies. So come with me and have a go at creating one, two, three or all of these cute little bugs out of recycled materials you have at home. materials you will need for our collage based task today is some scissors and some glue obviously because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting and pasting but you also need some paper now as a minimum if you just have some plain white paper that is fine and we can work with that I'll teach you how but if you have some colored paper that's awesome if you have little scrap papers from around the house for example Delilah was playing with glitter the other day I could use a bit of that I found some Bunnings paint samples, things like that are perfect for a task like this. Paper also could be something like wrapping paper. Found some scrap wrapping paper, I'm going to use that. I've even raided my recycle bin and the girls got some Play-Doh over the weekend so I could use part of this cardboard. Maybe you have a cereal box you could use as well. Paper could also be baking paper. So there's lots of different types of paper. You might have magazines or some newspaper around the house as well. So paper doesn't simply need to look like this. It could be in many, many different forms. So have a look around the house, be creative with the type of paper you can find, and we'll come back together and start our creative collage task. Another thing that you could use is some tissues. I guess that's paper. Might be a little bit difficult to cut, but, but what I'm trying to say is to try to be creative with the paper that could be around your home. Okay, I will be using sort of this colored paper just to show you um, some different layers and different things that you can do. However, I wanna assume that all you have at home is some white paper. So we're gonna turn our boring white paper into something interesting by giving it some pattern. So if you have some things like textures at home, you can add some patterns very simply to sections within your white paper. I just have a texture here, making confetti sections. You could do spots, you could do lines, you could do checkers, you could do triangles. There is limitless options for you to create interesting paper rather than just working with white. So that's step number one, I guess, is if you don't have this type of paper, colored paper, turn your boring paper into something a little bit less boring. <laughs> Another thing, I have some watercolors at home, so I'm gonna use a cotton bud as my paintbrush. So let's be creative with the things that are around our house we can use them for art as well. But look how simple that is and fun too. Cool. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so today I'm going to teach you three different ways you can create a bug out of paper or collage. So you will need quite a lot of paper if you're choosing to create all three. Now, I do suggest as well that you do get yourself a pencil or a texter because I always find when cutting shapes, it is a lot easier to draw the shape first so that you get the size and the shape correct before cutting. So the first thing we're going to do is have a go at creating a ladybird. Now a ladybird, we're gonna go with sort of an oval to start with. 
Then we're going to cut a semicircle to put on the top. Then we're going to cut some straight lines and some little circles like that. We are then also going to add some antenna. So that's the basic shapes that we're going to go for with our number one ladybug. Now my ladybug is going to be very, very abstract. So I'm going to use some crazy paper for it. Today I've been inspired to create this task because Sadie went to the park yesterday and she came home and gave me this beautiful leaf. And so I thought, oh, that might be cool to turn that into a bit of an art lesson. So something like this, if you have some big leaves, you could also use this as your paper, if you like. You could cut your leaf to um, create one of the shapes, if you prefer. I'm not gonna do that for now because I'm gonna create a ladybug to stick on top. But the first shape we need is that big oval I was talking about. So I'm gonna choose a piece of paper. I've got so much to choose from here. What do I choose? Hmm. I'm gonna go with this guy. Now, when we're creating our shape, because there's lots of little details that we're going to add on top, we don't wanna to start too small. I know that ladybugs are very, very tiny, but we're gonna create an enlarged version. So I suggest that you create your oval to be at least the size of your palm. This is my palm here. So when creating the shape, I want my ladybug to sort of take up a lot of my paper here. If we do start too small, I find that cutting little details gets harder and harder the smaller they become. So start off bigger, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to carefully draw a nice big oval. Now, if you haven't done that perfectly, don't stress. It's just a bit of a guide. Now we're gonna cut. Now, when I, I find when I'm teaching my younger students to cut circles, that's probably the hardest thing that they can ever do. And a lot of them struggle and a lot of them say, I can't do it. Now, that's okay. If you think you can't do it, the only way you're going to be able to do it is by practicing. So please do not ask mum or dad or whoever's around you to do it for you because that's not gonna help you to learn. The point is not to be perfect. The point is to enjoy, but also practice our skills. And I find if I work really slowly and take my time, that's when I do my best work. So I encourage you to do the same. So I'm gonna just try and carefully cut around my shape. If your oval isn't perfect, just do your very best. There. Now, I can see the line I've drawn on this side. So I'm going to call that the ugly side, which means I'm going to turn over my page and I'm going to work on here now. Awesome. The next thing we need is the head, which is going to be a semicircle shape. So you can find another piece of paper somewhere. I've got so many. I might choose, here we go, my old wrapping paper. <laughs> okay. Now remember, I want this to be the good side. So I'm going to turn it over. I need to use my oval as a guide because I want to know the size. So I'm just going to give myself a bit of an indication as to where my head's going to go. I'm going to do a dot there and a dot there. So I am then going to draw a line connecting those dots just like that. Then I'm going to do a big arch, like a big rainbow. If you can draw a rainbow, you can draw an arch just like that. If it's a bit wonky or wobbly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't stress. Now I'm gonna cut this out as best I can. Now, I've cut this a little bit wonky on purpose for you because I wanted to show you that if you haven't done it exactly the way you wanted it to, you could go back and just fix it up a little bit if you need to. There we go. All right, there's the head coming together. We'll stick that on just like that. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to cut four pieces of straight paper. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna choose, hmm, I might choose this, this cool confetti paper here. First thing I'm going to do is actually cut out a rectangle. Just like that. 
then within the rectangle, that's gonna help me to cut my straight lines. Okay, they're not too thin, not too thick. One, two, three, and four. Just try your best to cut as straight as you can. I might use this a little bit later. It's always good to reuse and recycle. Now where they're gonna go, it's gonna be a line that goes down the middle, like that. There's gonna be a line that goes across the head, between the head and the body, like that. And he needs two antenna. You can see that our ladybug is coming together quite nicely, just like that. Now I haven't stuck it together yet. It's all just still separate. We just wanna see what it looks like before we lock it all in. Now the lucky last thing we need to do for our ladybug is a couple of spots. So we're just going to choose a cool piece of paper and cut out about four or five or even six circles that are going to go on the belly. I'm going to use the glitter paper for that. But remember, I want this to be the good size. I'm going to turn this over. One, two, three, four circles. Now little circles are the hardest ones. Cut. But again, just do your very, 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 very best. Oh, cool, that looks awesome. And I love that a lot of this task is using recycled materials. So this is something Delilah created that didn't have much use before, but I'm giving it a new life and turning it into something else. And just like my Play-Doh container here, he was going to go in the recycle bin, but I'm going to reuse him, turning him into something beautiful. Oh, so good. I've got a little bit more glitter paper, so I might use that for another one. Cool. This is the idea of the ladybug, and it's all just a matter of gluing it all together now. So I might glue this piece here first. That glue doesn't work. There it is. I stuck him to my leaf as well, but you can choose to stick him on some paper um, or just leave him separate and he could go on a wall or something like that. So there is our first little bug that you might choose to have a go at. Make sure that you're using lots and lots of glue. And you might've noticed when I'm gluing things down, I don't put glue onto the back. I put glue onto the object that I'm sticking down. Just makes it a lot neater. Now, if the fingers are getting a little bit sticky, it might be time to wash them before we move on to bug number two. Okay. Bug number two, we're going to do a bit of a firefly kind of moth looking bug. So the body is going to be a thinner, longer oval. Then we're gonna layer some wings that look like leaves. One two over the top and then some small ones then we'll do a head some antennas like that alrighty so this is our moth you could choose to do the wings a little bit more triangular if you prefer um, that will be a little bit easier if you think this might be a bit tricky for you so first choose, we're gonna start with the body. Choose your paper for the body. I'm gonna do my cardboard that I found in my recycle bin. Now remember, start off big, 
if you start off small, you're making your life really tricky. So it's a bit hard for me to draw my shape first, so I'm sort of just cutting it the best I can. Okay, thank you, Play-Doh box. This is what I've got. I'm gonna fix it a little bit, but you can see that it's a lot thinner oval shape. Wonderful. Okay, that's our body. Now we're going to layer the leaves, as I said. I'm gonna use my baking paper for this. Now you can also decorate the baking, baking paper if you wanted to, just by drawing some lines. Depending on the type of baking paper, it may or may not show up if it's got a bit of a grease to it. No, let's just drop it. Okay. So, I want my wings to be the right size, so I'm sort of just gonna hold my body there so I can tell where the top is. So there's a little dot so I know. And I'm gonna draw, it's a bit tricky to draw on baking paper because it's got a bit of a greasy film over it. But you can see there, I've done a bit of a leaf shape. If you prefer, you could do something more of a small triangular shape. If that one's a bit too tricky, have a go at that one. Now, I'm actually only gonna draw it once because I'm actually going to fold my paper in half. that I can cut two wings that are the exact same size. Go cheeky little trick. Ta -da! <laughs> there they are, they kind of look like wings. They'll go like that. So now I want another layer of wings, but they're gonna be the same shape, just a little bit smaller. I might use some colourful paper that I have lying around the house. Again, I'm going to draw on the ugly side. I want it to be smaller than this one. So I might. Like that. Again, I can fold it. piece of paper for the head I think it's got lots of decoration going on and for the head we're simply going to do a circle that ugly side down like that he's so cute okay he needs two little straight lines coming out like that that's the idea with our second bug I'm going to stick it down starting from whatever's furthest away. So for example, if I stuck the head first, um, that wouldn't be the neatest. So the best thing to stick first would be these wings that are closest to the body. So I just need a little bit of glue. Because they sort of stick out a little bit. There we go, our baking paper's doing well. So using enough glue is very important. Now the second layer of wings. There. Notice I haven't stuck the bottom down because I kind of want the wings to stick out a little bit as if you were flying. Good. Now I'm going to stick the antenna to the back of the head. like this takes quite a bit of organization so that you don't lose your pieces before you stick them down. He looks cool. There we go. Notice that they're a very similar size 
and they didn't get too fiddly because I didn't do them too small. Okay, our third bug. All right, the third bug I'm going to show you today is actually a bee. So this one, we're going to get a nice big oval for the body. We're gonna cut some stripes. We're gonna cut a little stinger. Two big wings and a couple of eyes. So we need to start with the body, remember whatever's furthest away. So it doesn't have to be a yellow bee. If you do not have yellow paper, don't stress. I'm actually going to use my maroon once again. Now remember, we want the body to be as big or even bigger than your palm. So when you're drawing your oval, don't draw too small. We want to take up most of the paper. You can see there I've taken up almost a quarter of my paper here. Now, we should get good at, draw, at drawing ovals and cutting ovals because this is the third one we've done. Awesome. I'm putting the ugly side down for the stripes. I'm going to use my polka dotted paper that I created here. When we create the stripes, again, I'm just going to cut maybe a bit of a rectangle or a bit of a square. Now, this square needs to be bigger than the body that we've started here. Can you see that? If I did my square too small, my stripes would only take up part of the body. So I want my stripes to take up the whole body. So that's why I've made sure it's big enough for the body. So now I'm just going to cut some straight lines. You can do as many as you like. Try to make them nice and straight as you can. And remember when we're gluing, we glue the back of the piece of paper we're sticking down. I'm not putting glue onto the body here. If I did that, if I put glue down like that, it's likely that you would still see some glue residue and it makes our artwork sticky. It makes our artwork not very neat. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna put glue on the back of my stripe here. So there's only glue on here and then place it where I want it to go. That way you can't see any glue on our background. Now, what you might have noticed is that as I have come down the end of the bee, my stripes are now too long. That's okay. It's better to be too long than too short because we can trim them. So if I just turn it over, I can now cut so that my strips are the right size. Ta-da! Wonderful. Now we need some wings. I loved doing this layering kind of um, wing with my baking paper, so I'm going to do that again. But the shape is a little bit different this time. The shape is more of a teardrop. I'll show you what I mean. Rather than doing a leaf shape, I'm going to start at a point and I'm going to go around and then meet back at this point. Can you see how it kind of looks like a tear or a raindrop? Now, again, I need two. So if you can, fold your paper. So you only need to do this once. Sorry, mums and dads, this, uh, this is a bit of a messy task. There might be some glue and there might be some scrap paper everywhere, but we're gonna clean it up at the end, aren't we guys? Okay, my wings might go there, but I'm gonna put a bit of a stronger piece of paper on top in the same shape. Um, that's just optional. If you wanna have a go at that, you can. There. Now, for the stinger, all you need is a long, thin, triangle shape. You might not even need to draw it because it's just chopping straight and then straight again. Ta -da. Okay. Now, the eyes are a little bit trickier. You just need some white paper probably for the eyes. Draw a circle, 
because we want to. What are we going to do? That's right. Fold it in half. Cut your circle as best you can. And then just make sure you glue down the ugly side. <laughs> That's my little bee. He needs eyeballs, obviously, which I'll draw on soon. We can start to glue that all together, starting with whatever is furthest behind. So for me, that's my baking paper wings. One, two, what you might notice with collage, it's all about layering. So that means that we start off at the bottom and just like a bricklayer builds a house, puts bricks on top of each other, that's just like with collage. So you need to start with whatever is furthest away. For example, with my B, it's the body. Then I've built a layer with stripes. Now I'm building a layer with my big wings. Now with my little ones. And if you have the time and the materials at home, you might even choose to add more and more detail. What are some other details that you think you could add to these bugs. The more detail usually means our art is even more interesting. E, little stinger. A couple of eyes. especially if you have a green piece of paper you might choose to cut a nice big leaf obviously draw it first if you need to if you only have white paper you could always color in a piece of paper or paint it green to make it look more like a leaf and you could choose to then stick your paper on top like that buzz 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 <laughs> now it's time to back up. So it's as simple as that. <laughs> I really hope that you got creative with finding whatever you could at home and had a go at cutting some simple shapes and sticking them together to create some little buggies. I'd really love to hear your comments below and if you could also like and follow the Art Life YouTube channel, that will really help me to create some more crafty videos for you guys. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time. <laughs>